So, my idea for f &P is to make a baking show that is suited for YouTube. My plan is to create two to three videos between eight to ten minutes long, which is a standard length on YouTube, each where a different baking recipe is made. On my survey, I asked that if you had a baking show, what would you call it? And I got a variety of answers, but one really stood out to me. This should be easy. Trying to bake slash cook a somewhat easy recipe, but sometimes fail out of pure idiocy. The respondent added that it would be a comedy baking show. While I don't intend to have this be a comedy show, this sort of show theme would fit well considering the personality my survey. Well, when considering personality my survey showed that the presenters should have. As you can see here, my survey shows that presenters should mostly be friendly, bubbly, and relatable. The relatableness would come from the fact that they are doing what should be easier recipes, but have their doubts and their abilities, as well as making small mistakes, or, for example, not being perfect about the amounts of each ingredient needed, just close enough. Another question from my survey that also adds to this is what overall tone do you think a YouTube-style baking show should have? Where 88.89% said that it should be homely. These features would all work well with an amateur hour type of baking show, just a normal person at home baking. So what is its purpose? The purpose of this project is mainly to entertain while also showing the viewer how to make a recipe. A secondary purpose of this project is to encourage people who might doubt that they are able to bake, to do just that, bake. Where does it belong? As I mentioned earlier, these videos would belong on YouTube as they will be short videos, not long enough to stand as a TV show. Furthermore, it's rare to find amateur baking shows unless they are in competitions like Nailed It on Netflix. I'm not telling you. There is clearly an audience for my project on YouTube due to the countless baking videos already on the website. This show will appear to be a mixture of the more professional type channels like How to Cake It and Man About Cake and your classic YouTubers making baking videos, for example, Dan and Phil, who are more amateurs. For example, it'd be a downfield style presenter, but the editing style layout of the video would be more would more mirror how to cake it and man about cake. So the target audience for my project was somewhat a hard hard to place, so I found my results from my survey to be somewhat inconclusive, due to it only having 18 responses total and not even a, not an even range across ages. However, I did find that an equal amount of males and females enjoyed watching baking shows, with 11.12% of people liking them more than not, once again proving that there is an audience for my project. When taking, into, when taking into consideration social grades, my project would definitely appeal to D and E grades and possibly C2, the C2 grade. The D and E grades are more likely to be the type of people that question their abilities while baking, as a majority of younger people who haven't had much life experience yet and might still be living at home. As for my inspirations, there have been four major ones of them for this project. Two of, all of who I've already mentioned, How to Cake It and Man About Cake. The other two are How to Cook That and Rosanna Pansino, more specifically her Nerdy Nummy series. One thing all these channels have in common is that they have intros and graphics that personalise their shows. This is one thing I want to include in my videos as it will help give the show more personality and hopefully make it more recognisable as well. Something that is more present within How to Cake It and Mind About Cake is the banter that the presenters have with the off-screen crew. This gives the show more of a friendly feel and makes the presenters seem more human. It's clearly not forced though. This is something I also hope to include as it fits well with the amateur theme, as it seems likely that they would ask questions to someone off-screen in hopes of getting advice. As for crew, I've decided to choose Polina as my cinematographer. This is due to her experience with, baking, with making baking videos as she has a small series on her YouTube channel called Baking Buds. And while I believe that there are quite a few things left to be desired in terms of camera angles in these videos, I believe that with her more recent experience in short film cinematography, that she'll be able to help me create my desired look for my project. I decided, I decided that I'll be direct my project, however, I will be given Polina quite a bit of free will when it comes to filming, and I was, as I will need to be focusing on presenting and baking. Can I just ask? Yeah. Go back a sec. Yeah. Sorry. That's all right. I love the juxtaposition of the baking and then the the <laughs> domestic violence. <laughs> but why is that one there? Um, so it's just showing more like um, close-up angles and such, which oh, I okay. want to focus on more so. Whereas you can see in her um, baking video, it's kind of more pulled away, and ah, I want to get more close-up shots right. of it. Right. Sorry, that was just me being an idiot. No, right. <laughs> no worries. 
So, as I mentioned not a moment ago, I'll be presenting the show. I decided that I'd be a good candidate as I've had previous experience with presenting before on top of the tunes, a show from the Multicam project. In addition, I also did a short casting call for myself just to double check if I would fit the role. So, that's what's that. Hello and welcome to This Should Be Easy. I'm your host April and this is the show where we're baking. It should be easy, right? Today's episode we are baking dairy free brownies. Now I actually do have a friend who is lactose intolerant, so I thought this would be the perfect recipe that I can share with her and hopefully she would be able to enjoy. I think that's well good. Yeah. Fun times. So the style. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. For the location of my project, I had quite a few options. Five, in fact. So let's just go through those. This was Chloe's kitchen. This was Good Harry's. kitchen, that one. Uh, this was Tyler's. Here go, go back. I need to, need to process these a bit more. Yeah. Go back to Chloe's. There's Chloe's. That's not a bad kitchen. Yeah. That's a stick. Uh, we have Harry's. Oh, that's a prime kitchen. Look at that oven. <laughs> Islands, which we have just the one picture off, really threw off the um, whole presentation. It, I was on a rush is that an island? Yeah. An island yeah. Oh, that's, that's what I want in my kitchen. <laughs> an island is huge. Oh, it's yeah. got like a uh, power outlet. This is Pina's kitchen. Oh, Pina, that is a kitchen. See? Very ugly. <laughs> Here's my kitchen. It's very green. It's very. Yeah. That looks a bit like my kitchen, that one. Yeah. Fridge magnets. Yeah, my <laughs> mum collects them. So they're covered because my dad's in the RAF, he gets them as well. Good fridge, that. Yeah. Um, in the end, I decided on choosing my own kitchen. This is down to several reasons. Firstly, I have complete access to my kitchen whenever I need to, and this will make setting filming dates easier as I won't have to figure out when someone else is available to let me use the location. Of course, I'll still need to check with my cinematographer, but it gives us far more options. Secondly, by using my own kitchen, it means I won't need to rely on, other, on another person having the equipment I need to bake and or removes the need for me to take equipment to another person's house. Because I'm unable to drive, transporting somewhat large and heavy equipment on public transport would be a massive hassle. Thirdly, I know my kitchen and I'm comfortable in it. This is important as I'll be presenting the show and for me to be able to see more natural in my role as presenter will help the show flow and make it more entertaining too. Finally, in comparison to the other kitchens, while mine may be smaller and not look quite as grand, the lighting appears to be significantly better, especially considering these photos were took in the middle of the night. This is beneficial as there is always a possibility for lighting outside to change, whether it be due to weather or the time of day. Knowing that the lighting won't be affected by those removes some possible stress while filming. After all, baking isn't a short process, and while possible, it's not the best idea to film over the course of multiple days. Days. <laughs> Essentially, longer shoots means more time for the lighting outside to change. I did film some test footage, however, I ran out of time to edit, but what I found was that I tr because I tried to film on my own, it made the overall process longer. So having someone else do the filming should hopefully make it quicker. It will also just make it flow better, and they'll be able to focus on things that maybe I'm not focusing on at the time, so like getting better shots of me actually baking and stuff. I must admit, having seen the photos from all the kitchen, mm -hmm. like, I'm really curious see how you can make the most of like your space mm -hmm. so if you worked out your camera angles and things got, where you can shoot yeah I've got a couple in it. mind um, you can't see it on one of these photos but so yeah actually you can there's a hatch here so there's a couple of um, things that you could do from there um, I could it's not going to look that great but we also have an iron board that I could bring in if we do need any of that type of area so it kind of creates a makeshift island also would help with the um, amateur hour sort of thing of like, I'm not this big person who has this Quran kitchen, but I do have an iron board that I can use to get this angle. So that would also quite fit the theme. Um, so budgeting. When looking at what my possible budget would need to be for this project, I decided to focus on looking at equipment and ingredients I'd need for baking. Now, my initial budget only includes one recipe's ingredients, which, dairy, which is dairy-free triple chocolate brownies. In addition to the basic equipment, one needs to, one needs to bake. But all, that already comes up to £251.13. Jesus. I did also take into uh, consideration that if I had to rent a location as well as, equi uh, as well as the equipment the college provides for us, that it bumps up to a considerable amount. I didn't actually get that amount, though, unfortunately. Luckily for me, as I already have the equipment I need for baking, a location that's free and the college supplies the equipment for filming and editing, I actually only need to worry about finding the price of the ingredients. And for the dairy-free uh, dairy triple chocolate brownies, 
That is only a total of 1417, which is far better than only that. Um, so constraints. The main constraint I'll have to deal with is the small space in my kitchen when it comes to filming, as it might make taking some shots a little awkward to film, but there are ways around that, as such with the hatch, and also the ironing board that I mentioned earlier. And due to it being likely that my project will have long shooting days, it means that I may have a little bit of a hard time sorting out dates with my cinematographer. However, because I will be using my own kitchen, like I mentioned earlier, it will make almost any day to film on available. And because it is my own house as well, if there is a need to possibly stay over the night and then film in the morning, we can do that as well. Um, but that's the end. Would you like some brownies? Absolutely. Maybe, um, <laughs> I'm going to make a cup of coffee in a second, so I'll have all that. <laughs> I've had some mixed reviews. Plina really likes them. Other people, I oh, think, have. Right um... Oh, yeah. Nevo's on a diet, so April's um, I just mad as brownies to come. Oh, oh, cheers. That is awesome. Yeah, he's, not, uh, he's not pitching today. Brilliant. Cheers, April. They are dairy free. I think some people may be noticing the uh, butter difference. I don't know, but that's what I put brownies as my favourite things to celebrate. What would you like to see made? Brownies. Absolutely. So, yeah, brownies. Right, so. Crumbs out of the I thought that was very rich. I think that you're, you've really understood what your idea is, you're really engaged with the idea, you seem really invested in the idea that came across about the pitch. I love the way the pitch was structured and put together, I thought it looked great throughout, I loved uh, the kind of visual sensibility of it at different points as well. You did a really good job at justifying more or less everything throughout. Um, I think that some of the secondary research that you did mm -hmm. um, could have been a little bit stronger and you could yeah. have shown a few more examples to get mm -hmm. across the kind of tone of the show, yeah. but I think that the images still did a good job and seeing your casting call did help in getting across the style that you are looking for as well. Mm -hmm. Now. I think test footage should have been a must here. Yeah. I think that's the only thing that it was really missing. Oh, I would have loved to have seen. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is the kind of shot I would do yeah. my main intros and talk throughs. Yeah. These are, this is the kind of close up I, shot I'd I do have all the footage because I did attempt to film when I was doing the baking last night. It was really late when I was doing it. So it was one of those things of like, I filmed it and then I just ran out of time to edit it. So I have it. The footage isn't the best because, of course, I was there on my own, so I wasn't able to get some of the shots I could have had there been someone else. Okay. So it was just a bit of, I should have thought about it sooner and probably done it sooner. Okay. All right. No worries. Generally, I thought that was excellent, though. I don't know about you guys. Mm. Yeah. I have one question. Mm -hmm. By the way, the brownie is really good. Thank my you. question is, when you're showing, like, Polina's uh, examples of her cinematography and stuff, mm -hmm. you talked about <coughs> wanting to have bit more variation of the camera angles. Mm -hmm. Just wondering, like, I'm still struggling to picture, are you trying to make it like a cinematic but homely baking show, um, or are you going to go with the classic, like, uh, bird's eye mm -hmm. shot of the, you know, the mixing So, bowl? I don't want it to be particularly cinematic, but I don't want it to be so static, because I feel like that won't create as much of an interest. Yep. I do want the occasional, like, kind of, like, so, for example, if I'm putting something into the oven, then the shot of going into the oven sort of thing. Do you Not foresee it being any different to other like baking shows from a, a cinematography point of view? So um, I, know, I mean, there's not exactly a massive amount of wiggle room for creativity, but... I don't think it will be particularly different from some of them because a lot of people, uh, a lot of people, especially on YouTube, do use those sort of things to help uh, create the interest. Yep. Um, so we'll have a similar style, but I'm hoping it will be uh, personality-wise and the thing, show yeah. and with graphics and such, it will create its own personality. Yeah, I think you've got <clears throat> enough, uh, of, uh, it's, it's unique enough with the, the way it's going to be delivered that you don't need to go into that. I just want some yeah. clarification. I think the thing that keeps people coming back to a lot of these shows is a lot of the personalities. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, you could be making the best food ever, but if you're, I don't know, um, I'm trying to think of someone boring, if you're boring, you're not going to come back. Whereas mm -hmm. I think if you're engaging, people are going to come back. And would right. you say it? I mean, would you say it falls more into like a, a tutorial or more of like a sort of entertainment 
Um, so that's one thing that I have been thinking about a lot, and I think now it's going more into an entertainment based thing, but there yeah. will still be the element of the tutorial with um, prob uh, weighing out ingredients, the recipe being in the description, and also them talk uh, me talking through what I'm doing. Yeah. But it's not going to be as like a structured tutorial, this is what you do. Okay, yeah. okay sounds good. I'm really looking forward to this one. Well done. Alright? Thank you.